Welcome everyone to another episode of Kiwi Talks. My guest today, man, this guy has the meanest resume ever. He's uh, half of the duo uh, PhD. He's done oh, album after album, song after song. He's got hundreds of songs, heaps of music videos. He also hosts the Broke Artist podcast on Tuesday nights. This guy's work ethic is insane. Uh, I'd like to welcome... Ryan Lovins, a.k.a. T13. My man, salute, bro. Thanks for having me. That's all good, bro. I appreciate Th- it. Thanks for making the trek down, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, it's a bit of a trek, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> saying Google Maps got me on the wrong turns, but we made it. That's what it's all about. Yeah, hard, man. Bro, it is, I've got quite a few questions to ask you, but the the one, the most pressing one, because I, I talked to JCK about this briefly, Yeah, is because your work ethic, man, is insane. Because you, 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 You're doing music, you're writing rhymes, you're mixing, mastering then you got all your music videos yeah and all the editing with that and then you got your podcast that you do plus you were working nine to five and you got a family man yeah bro <laughs> how how do you manage your time man because it seems impossible it's like some elon musk shit it's yeah like for a long time i've never really been able to actually i don't know pretty much grasp how i actually do a lot of it i think a lot of it's just more i try to make shit count you know what i mean so when i've got time to put into my creativity I'm not mucking around, you know what I mean? It's like I I find something I want to finish, complete, I complete it, move on to the next thing, and so on and so on. But yeah, just kind of creative process-wise, like I was just saying just before we put the mics on, you know what I mean? This is the first time in my life I've actually had a creative space. And I think the start of this year, I was kind of planning on taking a break from music, you know what I mean? Like that was kind of where it was heading. I've been doing this for a very long time, almost 20 years, you know what I mean? Just grinding my ass off and... Yeah, I, I think having a creative space has really opened my mind up to just what I was capable of doing myself with the mixing and recording and all of that kind of stuff my, on my own. And um, yeah, for a long time, I've kind of always paid people to do that stuff for me, to engineer and, and things like that. Not, not that it's expensive, man. Bro, you, you know <laughs> what I mean? And so that all falls back into having kids. And so it's like me taking on that responsibility for my own music itself is, is another thing that's eating up time as well but it's, yeah. it's given me a creative space in my head to kind of just try things out when you're paying 50 bucks an hour at studios you're not playing around too much i used to go in there i have things locked down one take tracks onto the next boom 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 you know what i mean whereas at home i'm just vibing my music's kind of changed a bit with it you know what i mean i'm i'm doing a lot more singy kind of stuff and it's just kind of opened up a creativity for me in a whole different space just having it there but time wise it's a hard one, man. Like every day I'm tired of shit. Like I, I start I start work at five in the morning every day. So I'm up at four, oh, you know what I mean? Bro. So I think I, as much as a downfall that is, I think it's also an upside where I finish work at 1.30 in the afternoon. You know what oh, I mean? So cool. I've, I've got the whole afternoon, even though I'm tired as hell, you know what I mean? And then I've got my kids in the afternoon, but it gives me a bit more time to to play around, you know what I mean? Do, so, you, do you keep like a diary though of like, okay, I've got this space not allocated really. or you nah, just... Nah, my, just... head's, my head's a mess, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, it's all in my head and it, a lot of the time I'm frantically jumping between things and things, you know what I mean? Just just to kind of keep myself inspired really, you know what I mean? Like like any art artist, you know what I mean? If you stick on one thing for too long, it kind of burns you out. So I, I kind yeah, of dive into something else, come back, finish things up, you know what I mean? And I think that's kind of helped me along too, is just I'm so scattered in my head, it kind of helps me stay focused on a whole bunch of different things at once. You that's know? cool, but it means you're never bored. That's it, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, like I say that to a lot of people. I think if I wasn't so creative and didn't grind so hard on so many different things, my head would be a mess, you know what I mean? I think I keep busy a lot of the time just to keep myself above water, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a main one for me, I think. I think that's probably the answer to the question is I keep myself busy as hell just to keep afloat you know what i mean keep yeah, myself well, sane i think i think uh well i've found from people that i know is if they don't if they ain't doing anything then they get depressed and they feel like they've That's lost it. their purpose and shit so. overthinking man you know what i mean overthinking's a killer you know like i i, I truly believe that like while i'm at work I, I used to listen to music like it's crazy like congratulations on this podcast and stuff like that you know what i mean i know the work it takes to put this kind of stuff together and you know um yeah at work like i don't even listen to music anymore I listen to podcasts all day, every day, yeah, you know what I mean? That's exactly and it's like, what I'm doing. I, I notice when I'm at work and like, say my, my earmuffs, the Bluetooth, you know, if they die and I, I'm sitting in silence, yeah. it's a whole different day, <laughs> man. You know what I mean? Like you're overthinking life, you're thinking bills, you're thinking life, you know? So yeah, I think, I think a lot of that is just, yeah, keeping busy, you know what I mean? But 
something like this is awesome, bro. Awesome to see someone putting this together properly. This this layout's awesome, bro. Congrats, man. No, oh, cheers, man. Yeah, it uh it costs a bit of a bit of money, so I don't think many people will be trying to emulate this that, yeah, anytime I, soon. I, I, I yeah, like I looked into it all, bro. Like when I started my one, it was like I've done my one for as not as cheap as possible, but I haven't invested as much as I could. Like I know that you could put it easily five ten g's into something to make it yeah well this one this one was about seven g's yeah yeah I seven can see g's. It, bro. you know yeah yeah uh probably half on the gear and then half on the actually build. on the actual building of it yeah i will say that i didn't actually build it no nah, i ain't no diy guy <laughs> <man. laughs> same, same as me brother yeah uh, i'll be like, i'll just pay a dude to do it yeah no nah, yeah. same as me bro <laughs> find out oh true so because you grew up in la right yeah i was born in los angeles i moved here at um 13 uh what made you move here from la just being 13, just my mom met a New Zealander and um, yeah, just things were getting kind of hectic over there and they seen this as a good option for us. And Because you yeah. did a bit of time in San Diego as well. In San Diego as well, yeah, yeah. I lived there for about five or six years um, and yeah, like it was, it was, yeah, it was a really great experience to grow up there and then move here and kind of like, I, I, I don't know if we were going to talk about sports or anything like that, but just yeah, yeah. growing, growing up there, I, I, from a very early age, I started playing sports, you know what I mean? And I think that was a big thing that kept me out of trouble was I, I played inline hockey and ice hockey my whole life. Um, and then when I, when I moved to New Zealand, like when I was there, I played a lot of tournament hockey and stuff like that. We used to travel a lot. I was sponsored. And then I moved, I moved to New Zealand when it was quite a relatively new game. Yeah. So it gave me this leap of just like, I was it, you know what I mean? I was kind of became the the it guy, the standard, you know what I mean? So I got fully sponsored when I moved to New Zealand and stuff like that. And they used to do kind of like training camps on the weekends and I'd go out and kids would have me sign and post because it was like, no, they hadn't seen anybody young that had had that experience and the level of talent at that time, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. I, I moved to New Zealand at a pretty fortunate time for me just with what my passions were and how it was all lining up. And now New Zealand hockey's on a whole nether scale, you know what I mean? It's amazing. I got mates in Hawaii right now playing and stuff. So shout out to them. The New Zealand team just won uh, silver over there. So yeah, it, it's it's moved a lot like the sporting. But yeah, just when I first um, moved from Los Angeles to New Zealand, that was one of the biggest benefits was just, it kind of helped me fit into things and make a lot of friends as well. So it wasn't that awkward. Did, you, did you get a bit of culture shock though? Oh, mate you know what i mean like it, it yeah it takes a long time you know what i mean and especially just from feet to meters and just there was a whole lot of different things oh you, yeah true just dude, little like, things like that yeah yeah. you yeah. know what i mean i was quite young and you know what i mean i didn't pay too much attention in school to start with so you know what i mean like <laughs> but yeah um the culture shock definitely was there and you know what i mean i embrace the hell out of it now i love it you know like it's something i'm pretty jealous of just coming from america you it's not as deeply cultural you don't know your roots as deeply and you know what i mean and it's like I have friends that are Maori and stuff, and I'm envious of the connection they have with their an ancestors and just through stories and tattoos, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? It's like, not that that's not in America, but just, I never knew that, you know what I mean? I grew up kind of without my real old man and just like things like that. So it's like a lot of the cultural and the stuff like that. Yeah, it's yeah. hard to explain, but I'm I'm envious did, of did that, you, you know? Did you, like when you, when you talk about America... Like, what would you say some of the biggest differences between American culture versus New Zealand culture, or particularly in your case, Auckland culture? Um, Cause I've been told that uh, by quite a few Americans that they're quite, they have an aggressive work ethic. They work they really, do. really relentlessly, yeah. which you might've, that's why you might be like yeah. how you are, but then New Zealand culture tends to be a bit more laxed and chill. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's kind of, it, now that I've gone back as an adult, it seems a lot more um, similar in certain ways, but yeah, worlds apart and different, you know what I mean? Like when I just went back about three years ago with my family, they ex expected Hollywood to be beautiful and glamorous, you know, we turn up and there's junkies and it's homeless and it's dirty and you know what I mean? Just going back as an adult um, made me really appreciate what we have here, to be honest, you know what I mean? But um. I think I think traveling really and it does. Enhances it, it, oh the mind, man, man. You, you realize once you come back to New Zealand, you're like, this is beautiful, man. We you know, we're living in a slice of heaven compared to how other places in the world are doing it. But um yeah, just the differences between there and here, I think I think a lot of the is that there's a lot more hustle and bustle, there's a lot more not connections with just random people, you know what I mean? It's like everybody's kind of in their own world and doing their own thing and like you're saying, their work ethic, they're just grinding away, grinding away, you know what I mean? But at the end of it, 
if you don't have the connection with people and stuff like that. What's it all for? That's right. You know, I think only in my adult age is when that's kind of, um, yeah, really starting to, I don't know, just show itself in my own head is just all of this time I'm spending doing all the music and doing everything like it's great. But at the end of the day, I'd rather take my kids out and do something fun and memorable and take trips and stuff like that. So that's why at the start of the year, it was kind of going to pull back a bit, you know what I mean? But um, putting on a podcast that features tons of artists every week, it yeah. inspired the crap out of me, you know what I mean? So it was like, even though I was planning on taking a bit of a chill, before I knew it, I was flicking that mic back on and turning the studio back on, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Was, so what, let's talk about, so... Uh, so just, just turn this off. Bro. Yeah, so there's people that might not know, so... Ryan hosts a podcast every Tuesday, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, Tuesdays, 8 p.m. Broke, broke Artist Podcast, where the, uh, he plays a lot of music videos from up-and-coming artists. It's around about an hour, an hour long? Yeah, yeah, we keep it between an hour and two hours. It's just normal, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what? how many how many episodes are you up to now? It's um, f We're at 44, so this Tuesday coming up episode 45. So yeah. I've held it down for 45 weeks, week in, week out, you know what I mean? Through yeah. not really wanting to, you know what I mean? It's, it's, <laughs> a, it's a lot to... It's a lot to commit to weekly, you know what I mean? Like I've, oh yeah, no doubt. And I've, I've understood that, you know what I mean? There's been some lows in it too, where I'm telling the bro and him like, nah, this is it, this is the last one, bro. You know, like, but every week it, it pulls through, you know, and and afterwards I'm proud as shit that I got another one done, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's it's something I really enjoy doing, but at the same time it eats up a lot of time too. You oh know? yeah, I suppose sitting sitting it up just takes takes a while. Setting just... it up, finding the music, um, yeah, there's a lot of it just. I'm still learning as I go, you know what I mean? Like I I do it all myself, you know, so it's like um just really finding the content's the main the main time. Yeah, feeling, so where, you know? where, where do you get the content from? Do people it was, follow at you or it do was, you, or do you just find it online? Yeah, it was Facebook for a long time like I would I would like I'm pretty vigilant on what's going on, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So it's like I see some dudes dropping some heat that that got stuck in the pile too, but then I would, I've just got an email address to the Broke Artist Hip Hop Show at Gmail. That's where people send music. And um, yeah, I get a lot of music sent from overseas artists, to be honest. But yeah. I wanted to keep it more Kiwi and Aussie, you know what I mean? But um, the the Americans are the ones that find those emails and they start slamming them, oh, you know yeah, what man. I mean? They'll spam the shit out of... Because they see it as an yeah. opportunity, you know what I mean? Whereas as here, dudes are a lot more chill back, you know what <laughs> I mean? They're like, man, I'm fucking good. They're going to find me. Yeah, you know? yeah, Whereas, yeah. Totally, totally. Some, some of the most creative and talented dudes I've ever known have had the most laid back approach. And I feel like that kind of killed them. You know what I mean? And, and in a certain sense, it was there. It was a good thing and a bad thing at the same time. You yeah. Know a, I bit, mean? a bit overconfident. Yeah. But they, they had the skills, but they didn't have the, they didn't want to, they didn't have the drive. They didn't have the drive. They didn't want to push it upon people. You know what I mean? They felt yeah. like they were good enough to people would come where, especially in the, how the industry is now, you got to be making noise, man. You got to really, do something to set yourself apart or at least be really in people's faces so they're understanding what yeah, you're up to, yeah. you know? Well, you've been in the game for so long. So you probably understand how it used to be compared to now, back in the potheads days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, fuck, it's, yeah, it's coming on probably 15 years, you know what I mean, since we started the group back yeah, then. Yeah. So how did, how was that founded? How did, how um, did you and Neem, you and Neem Me, me and Neem, we, we linked up through a, a mutual friend named Maya Rada, salute to him. He's a very talented R&B singer and stuff like that. He's featured with tons of people like Four Corners, Scribe, D Dots. He's, he's, he was around in that era. He was signed to Disruptive and had a lot of great opportunities. But me and him had always been friends through hockey when I first moved here. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, I knew that he knew Aneem because Aneem had a song on the radio. It was uh, I think it was 1999 or 2000 and he won the, um, the what was the My FM? It was... Uh, I forget what the contest they used to have on there, but you used to send your tracks in and they'd play them on the radio and you'd win it. And um, Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I forget what the contest yeah, is called I, now, I, but he, he won the very first one of those and his song raised the level. It became like a, it became a stage at the big day out and stuff. So it was huge, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I was hearing this guy on the radio and I was like, I knew my, I knew him like, you got to introduce me, man. I was just starting to make music. Like I got to meet this dude, you know, we got a link. I knew he had a studio and stuff like that. And um, yeah, and we met and we just kind of, it never, never looked back. You know what I mean? Like he had a, crew called verbal remedies at the time and um they would invite me to do songs with them at some shows that they were doing and then before i knew it just me and anim were linking every couple of days writing music and yeah i mean we've got 11 albums now from all of that you know but um the potheads days just kind of that started with me and anim and a dude called blaze one mm -hmm. and also zone one as well he was our producer for over 10 years so shout out to zone one like 
he really laid the foundation for us to have music and be original with what we were trying to do, you know. But um, yeah, at the start of it, it was me, Blaze, and Anim, and Zone. And we did, I think, two or three albums together before the bro Blaze kind of slowly started to fade away. He just lived really far, and it was hard to get him to the studio. And the internet capabilities back then weren't the same. Like, it wasn't like, oh, bro, just send your verse in, and we'll just lace this up. And it wasn't like that, you know what I mean? It, that came quite a few years later. Like, a lot of our first stuff, like, we've got a whole bunch of albums, but the first maybe four or five, never seen the internet, you know what I mean? It was before that whole time. Yeah, yeah. So we used to be out, like, as the pilot, we used to be out putting flyers up on Sunday nights. We had teams of dudes. There'd be five or six of us out there, man, like, wallpaper, gluing, posters, wall-to-wall, everywhere, you know what I mean? And it was like, that used to be a lot of fun, and that was kind of how you you did it back then, you know what I mean? That was your Facebook-sponsored post. You, yeah, totally. You got out there and made sure people seen your shit, you know? Yeah. Whereas, yeah, I think the digital age is hurting a lot of people because of that. Now you got to pay the algorithm to... Yeah, you yeah. Know? And, and it, also, it's it's a lot easier to do music these days, so I, th- I feel it's a bit oversaturated. I remember talking to Pox about this yeah. quite a while back. He was saying that everybody wants to be a rapper now. Yeah. There's just so many, particularly yeah. in New Zealand, man. Even back then, everybody wanted to be a rapper, but they didn't have the the capability of doing it in their bedroom as, as flawless, you know what I mean? Yeah, now, yeah. now every dude, you got... See, that's what I, yeah, it's a hard one for someone who's been in it for so long. And you know what I mean? You learn the craft, you learn to write, you learn to record, you know, like me and the bro, when we're in the studio, we lay it down. You know what I mean? We've been doing it a long time. We've recorded hundreds of songs and stuff. And today a kid could throw on his phone, spit something to his phone, and that's going to get way more love, (laughs) way more, you know, it's, yeah, it's disheartening in a way for the dudes that have been around for so long. But excuse me, at the same time, you kind of got to learn to roll with it and adapt, you know what I mean? And I think that's something I've really trying to do in my own music, you know what I mean? It's just kind of find my little piece of what's going on now and just adapt with it, you know what I mean? I think that's where a lot more of my singing and melodies are coming from and stuff. I'm playing with a lot of auto tunes. Yeah, I've noticed that on your recent album. I'm enjoying it because I've never done it, you know what I mean? For so long it was like, nah, nah, (laughs) man, nah, that ain't hip hop. And to the point where it's like, I was done. I was, you know, at the start of this year, I was pretty done with music. I felt like I'd said what I said, I'd done what I'd done. And I was proud of, you know what I mean? I was proud of what kind of what I'd done already. And I think me and the bro, we never made it commercially like to make it a full on career out of it. You know what I mean? But, but that the, is the dream. Though. It, that was the dream. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, it's like, we look back and it's like, man, we fucking made it. You know what I mean? Like, and we're proud of what we've done. I think we've, accomplishment for accomplishment i mean we could hold it down with a lot of a lot of those big people you know what i mean like yeah well, but we just never got the same shine and that's just the reality of who we were when we came up and yeah you life. still you still achieved much more than a lot a lot of people do no man. doubt yeah man and the hard thing with music is it's just hard to make money off it these days it's, it's you kind of have to do it through merchandise it's yeah probably. I mean, yeah, we 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 did that for a long time. Like we sold a lot of T-shirts over the years. You know what I mean? Yeah. That was kind of our our way to, I don't know, kind of make some kind of financial gain out of it. Yeah. In the earlier years, like there was a lot more money in selling mixtapes and stuff like that because there wasn't the streaming. The streaming killed the the sale of music. You know what I mean? Like that's the the reality of it. And I see a lot of dudes like pushing for the iTunes thing. It's like, bro, it's fun and games, but iTunes is. It's done. It's bro. obsolete, it's, man. It's, it's done. It's no one's Spotify gonna buy that song shit. for two dollars when they can listen to it for free. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like that's, that's just, just the way it is. I mean, I buy a few dudes tracks off iTunes only because I want to play them on the show. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. So if I can't pinch it off Spotify, then I'll buy it off <laughs> iTunes. You know what I mean. But like, um, but ideally, if it's on YouTube, I'm going straight to that shit. You know yeah, what I yeah. mean. Like it's just um, the accessibility of music and just yeah, I don't know. It, it's a, it's a hard one. You know, like I. Some people still sell music, but it's a very hard road. You have to give it that niche You have to thing. have a very loyal fan base. That's it, bro. That's the main one, you know? Yeah. Like, and I feel like we, we did that with our last one. We sold quite a few hard copies because a lot of the people that listen and buy our music are the same people that have listened and bought our music for over 10, 15 years. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. They still want that physical copy to add to the collection of shit they have of ours and that kind of thing, you know? So we sold... I think we sold about 60 pre-sale copies that were all signed and stuff like that. And they would have been just to the hardcore people that have had... All of the albums, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And and it was cool. And pretty much that core fan base covers that lot of shit. So it's not really hurt in our pocket financially, you know what I mean? It's like we would put out hard copies and it was like, you just have to hit that first target to cover it. And it's like, okay, but there's been years where it's 
you know what I mean? A lot of stuff's come out of pocket. I feel like probably there's years where we've, not years, but over the years, we've probably put 30, 40 grand into our music, into our videos, to our touring and shit like that. And then when you when you weigh it up and you start counting numbers, we probably made like 20 or 30 of it back. Yeah, It's been a loss, you know what I mean? But at the same time, we've had a fucking great experience. You know, we've traveled overseas, broken even and stuff like that. And yeah. where, where was your favorite place to tour? Um, Melbourne. I think Melbourne. Oh, I love Melbourne. I think though. Melbourne, Australia is like the spot. Sorry, bro, if I'm way too far off the mic. No, it's all good. <laughs> I'm just like laxing. <laughs> um, yeah, Melbourne, Australia. We've had some really good shows over there before. Um, I think 2012 was the last time we back. Oh, maybe 2014 was the last time we went back. We went with a full live band. Oh like, damn! Yeah, bro, we did. We did it big. You know what I mean? And that time we broke even and came back. Like it was pretty much just a free holiday for everyone, but it was a great experience. You know what I mean? To do that with the live band. We went to Aussie as a crew, uh, I think six different times over the years. So that was kind of where we were trying to get to, you know what I mean? Like we realized that was the market you needed to break yeah, into. Yeah, a bit, for, you know? for Kiwis, you need to crack the Australian So we market. were trying. There was years we went over like twice a year and stuff and do two or three shows at a time. And we were just chipping away at it, you know. But um, a lot of the dudes that we dealt with over there and the connections, they kind of fell back off music a bit, having kids and work and responsibilities, you know. And we've seen a lot of that happen over the years, being in this for so long, you know, 15, 20 years. You see a lot of people come in and go, man. Like, Oh, totally, man. We've totally. seen a lot of people come in and hold fucking, you know, come in hot thinking they're going to stay there forever. I'll be making music when I'm 60. It's like, all right, bro, I'll see you in five years, man. <laughs> and they're not there, you know what I mean? And it's like, whereas as that's kind of been a hard thing too, is just since we've never had that commercial success, um, the new dudes coming in, they don't know who the fuck we are. They don't know what we've done. So then we nobody, you know what I mean? Until yeah. they kind of look back and they see some stuff, you know, and it's like, oh shit, these guys been doing this, you know, but I feel like we've had to prove ourselves with the new dudes every time it's come up again, you know what I mean? And um, live, we've always done that. Music's changed a lot over the years, so the sound was different, you know what I mean? So now... Well, a lot of your old stuff, because I was cranking some of your old, older stuff uh, earlier this week and then listening to your newer stuff and yeah, you can see... You can see the evolution of it. Definitely, definitely. I mean, a, a lot of our older stuff was a lot more raw, hip hop -y. Um, and Aneem's still on that shit, bro. He's on that underground, you know, fucking hardcore hip hop shit. That's just what he's always loved and always made, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I've, I've always kind of been more of like the, the singy hook and the melody guy, you know what I mean? So just to kind of venture off and do my own thing, it's opened up a whole different door of just creativity, like I was saying before, you know what I mean? But um, what's, uh, what's your process of writing? So say your process of writing would say, Aneem, do you guys sit in a booth and just write together? That That's how it, that's how it started to become. We'd start to write things just because nothing would ever happen otherwise. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Whereas if we got together like Friday night, get here, bro, we're going to write this song. Boom. And we'd do it. You know what I mean? We could, we could write a song in an hour together. Whereas <clears throat> kind of in the, um, in the peak of when we were really pumping out tracks, like we were recording one or two tracks a week for a couple of years. Like we had a set date at the studio Friday night everybody's meeting there, a song's getting recorded, you know? And it, we had that for probably about four years. That's how we were so productive, you know what I mean? Like, that was just what we were into and what we did every week. Someone would have new beats for the following week and it just kind of rolled through. And um, so back then we would just come up with a chorus and it'd be like, I'll see you next Friday, you know? Oh, yeah. And somehow it would all gel together in a way. And if, and if we wanted to make it more of a story checks, we'd text each other like, this is how I'm starting my verse. Start your verse that way or similar. End your verse similar to this. So it all gels nice. And um, I think that was a lot more being younger and having a lot more time to create and things like that. So it was like, we knew having that freedom, I'll see you back on Friday. It'd all be perfect. You know what I mean? Where now being older, it's like, come over. I need to see you writing this shit. So I write mine, you know, like, yeah. And that's, that's a lot of it with us. And, um, to be honest, we haven't been creating a lot together over the last maybe year, you know what I mean? Like we we've we put an album out last year which was kind of a a really it, it came out great. Like I'm proud as hell of it. It went number 1 and stuff like that. Like it was our first number 1 album after 15 years. Well, I was too. there at your release party. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah, shop, bro. No, that's right. You performed too, huh? Yeah, yeah. 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 And um but yeah, it went number 1 and it was like it was our first number 1 album after 15 years and it was deep and it was like We'd had a, from like 2015 to 2018, we'd probably had our best run as a group and it was probably our least most productive putting music out. And it was a weird feeling. It felt like for years we were putting out two albums a year and nothing was happening. You know what I mean? And we finally stopped and then we just started getting shit handed to us. Like, you know what I mean? We opened up for 
30 international acts in three years. Well, know? yeah, you sent me the list. Of I, all I would the people... say that that's got to be probably a record. Like, I don't want to sound like an e ass, but I don't, I don't think anyone <laughs> else has done anything similar to that. No, you know well, I mean, like, the, 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 just to give uh, the listeners and uh, viewers just an idea of the people they've opened up for. It's been, what, Tech 9 Raekwon, Mob S- Deep, Slick Busy Rick, Bones, Slick Rick, S- bro, like tons Ashanti. Of- yeah. Ja Rule, like yeah. like the big, big ones, you know what I mean? We've toured with Ari, the Rugged Man, um, a lot of opportunities. And a lot of it's just come from our live show. Just, I think people never understood us as a group until they seen us live. Yeah, and yeah. once they seen us live, they're like, okay, these dudes rap, rap. You know what I mean? Like live has always been our bread and butter to impress people. You know what I mean? Like being small white fellas, it takes a little bit more to get over the, get over the edge. You know what I mean? And I feel like our live show has always been the part that set us apart from everyone else. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, just the energy we put into it. We're not up there with a hundred layers on the track. It's me and my bro spitting raps. I got his BVs. He's got mine. This is yeah. how we, you know what I mean? And we turn up to a lot of people. Dudes are rapping over their songs and it might yeah, sound, yeah, it might yeah. sound cool. Like in the scheme of things to the audience and stuff, but for a rapper, rapper, you watching some dude spit a full on double time, 32 bar verse. And you're like, there's no BVs on this track. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Well, like, I'm the same when, when I've rapped live, I don't use BVs. Yeah. I know some, some people that do, but yeah. Oh no. And, and I don't take anything away from anyone that, you know what I mean? Whatever works for you works for you. But at the same time, I feel like that was our point of difference. And once to be honest, we did one show and it was opening for tech nine and it was with forsaken. Yeah. And from that moment, the promoter seen us and, and it just started this ball effect. Every time someone would come, we'd get the call, man, you know? And it was That's like, so cool, bro. It was deep. It, and it, after the end of that, it was kind of like, man, it doesn't get any better than this. We've just done it. You know what I mean? Unless we were doing those arenas and stuff on our own name, yeah. which is well, that's, a hard That's, that's, yeah, that's yeah, the dream. That's but, the dream, man. So we got to we got to pretend tour shit, you know, like arenas and stuff with huge X going out there, taking the picture in front of 5,000 people like, yo, it's us. And you know what I mean? <laughs> we the opening act, but you know what I mean? At the same time, it got us, it, we got to experience that feeling we always needed to, to kind of, experience you know what i mean we put the work in to get on the last stage in front of five thousand people yeah let's see if this works and it worked you know what i mean we would we would shut shit down in front of big crowds and so it just slowly just became our thing you know what i mean and we had a good good um like a good relationship with talk later they're a huge promotion company like yeah, one of the bros yeah, kane yeah. he watched us come up for a long time and he threw us a bone at the right time and it just kept happening you know what i mean so it was it was really a great experience from 2015 to 18 you know what i mean i'd say that was probably the highlight run of our whole career and we released the did, least amount of music you did know? you did you get to actually meet a lot of the dudes that you open up for because i know a lot with, of them I, I know with uh eminem when he came here and Del, uh, david dallas opened for him mm. he didn't even get to meet eminem uh, it, it's weird a lot of them some of them are a lot cooler than others you know what i mean like we'd always get the the meet and greet pass so we'd get to meet them in that sense yeah, you know yeah. what i mean so but um some of them are really cool. Like R.A. the Rugged Man, he's seen that we were touring with them. You yeah. know what I mean? So on the second night when we're in Wellington, he came back and actually sat down at a cup of tea. And he's an old fella. He's drinking tea behind <laughs> yeah. stage, you know. Well, but he's, he's married to like a German, yeah. German woman, I think. So, yeah, he's, yeah. he's on that tea buzz, man. And, yeah, um, yeah he, was, he was probably one of the coolest guys. Like, just really was interested in us. Like, what do you guys do? You know, what's your names? What you doing? How long you guys been doing shit? Um, Ritz was another really cool dude. Like, we got to have a good conversation with him. Tech Nine once came up to us in a sound check. Like it was, honestly, this is probably the highlight of my music career. Tech Nine came out while we're, but we opened it up for Tech Tech Nine with a full live band. At first we thought they're going to shut this down. They're going to say, nah, no band boys. Like, you know what I mean? Because the headline X not going to let the opening act just have that fuller fuller sound and shit. He was totally cool because we had to get it cleared with them to bring our band out. Yeah. And um, he came out in the middle of our sound check, popped his head behind the curtain. He just looked at me and Jared. He's like, you guys are fucking dope. You know, like you guys are killing. It was like, it was deep. You know, he walked over and shook his hand. Like, you don't even know what that means. You know, like, yeah, yeah. and that was a highlight. It was kind of, yeah, maybe four or five hours later, still sitting there like, whoa, like that actually happened. You know what I mean? And it was like, we knew he was in the building because he just finished his meet and greets. They walk into their own little green room and stuff. Yeah, yeah. We knew they were all sitting in there while we were sound checking, but to have that dude come out and actually acknowledge us like, yo, this is all right, man. You know, it, it was definitely a highlight. So he seems uh, from interviews that I've seen of him, he seems like a humble guy. So that's it. I, it. It fits his character perfectly. Yeah, no doubt. You know, and, yeah. and he's probably one of my favorites out of everyone that we've opened up for. You know what I mean? So oh, to, dude, the, so the guy's insane, man. He influenced my double time rap from a real like 10 years ago. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it was spitting his bars and trying to mimic like, like, fuck, can I write this shit? Like, come on, <laughs> man. You know, like, and, um, 
Yeah, so Tech Nine was definitely a big influence in our our faster style. You know what I mean? Yeah. And to have that guy even acknowledge us being alive on the stage, you know, was was a moment. Because you've done it for him three times, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. So we've had three different shows with Tech Nine over the years. Like, it was just that thing, and they were two different promoters, bro. But we'd still get that same call up. You know, like the very first time we played the Power Station was opening for Tech Nine. You know, and the, and the Power Station's like probably the bigger the biggest venue we've held down like a big. I think it's twelve hundred or something like that in there. It's a yeah. it's a pretty pretty big thing. Like a lot of the festival ones and stuff like that are where there's thousands of people, but it's a bit of a different vibe. But yeah, Tech Nine, um, his crowd, his shows, just it's really different. You know what I mean? Out of everybody that we opened up for and stuff like that, I'd say he's got the most loyal fan base. Oh no, by, doubt, by hands down by far. But they're outside the venues three or four hours earlier, chanting his songs. You know, yeah. it, it's, it's something else, you know? And, and, um, yeah, every time that we've opened up for him, it's probably been the best show we've ever done. Just crowd, just there for the right reasons. You know what I mean? They're there to get wild. They're there to be loud and all of that. Yeah. That's a main, main most of the times, anytime I've seen chicks throwing bar bras and <laughs> being titties out, bro, it's always a tech show, man. Like straight up, like he's got that wild fan base, you know? Yeah, man. Well, he's the most successful indie, indie artist of all time, I think. Yeah, he's definitely up there. He's in the Forbes list and things like that. Yeah, you know man. What I mean? so he's, 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 he's another dude that's always grinding, man. Yeah. Always grinding. Yeah, yeah. That's a huge inspiration, like just how he's always held it down. And he's he's really never took the foot off the gas ever. And he's nah. just kind of always kept pushing himself. And it's like, bro, where are you going to push yourself to next? And it just keeps going, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. And yeah, he's, he's, he's never really gone commercial, but he's managed to get cats like Lil Wayne and Eminem. Because and... they respect the shit out of him. Yeah, you know yeah. What I mean, that's why, bro. Hard. Totally, totally. Oh, true, man. So um, you also do a bit of graffiti as well. Yeah, man. Like um, the graffiti thing, um, that that stems a lot more back to the states, kind of thing. You right. know what I mean? So growing up, um, growing up in America, like, and and it kind of stems from the hockey thing too. Like I used to take a lot of train rides from Los Angeles to San Diego for tournament hockey. Yeah. And a haul along the train lines was just graft like crazy. You know what I mean? So that sparked the interest in me really young to um. Yeah, just to love graffiti, you know what I mean? And it was kind of... Because um, you're Broke Artist Podcast T-shirts. T did you design Yeah, yeah, this? I do all that stuff. So yeah, yeah. Any, any kind of graphic stuff you see on the Broke Artist pages or on the videos and stuff, that's all me. Like, I do all of that stuff. That's what takes a lot of the time away, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's uh, I set myself up to have to keep... I kept doing, like, original intro videos every time and shit. Yeah. And it was like, hold on, bro. You're just creating too much work <laughs> for yourself, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah... So the graffiti thing kind of took off for me, really. Um, I was into graph. Like, I, I was a graffiti writer for years before a hip-hop artist, to be honest. And, um, yeah, it was probably the early years of high school where I really started to get into the graph thing. And, um, yeah, did lots of pieces, like, done hundreds of pieces, done all the all the shit, you know? Like in if, our, if you were going to bomb a wall, how long would that take? Um, it really depends on what you're doing. You know what I mean? Like if I was going to do like a full on wild style piece, it'd probably take about five or six hours oh, if yeah. you were going for the gusto, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Through my whole teenage years, you know, I was that dude on the, the motorways, you know what I mean? In the train yards and doing, doing it all, you know what I mean? And, um, as you get older and have kids, you look at that a bit differently, you know what <laughs> I mean? So it's like, I started to build walls at home that I could paint, you know what I mean? Just yeah. to keep it alive. And, um, but yeah, over the years, graffiti, opened up a lot of different doors for me to be honest and like now i do kind of graffiti logos for people and just different little things just to keep the the art alive in my own self you know what i mean like i haven't actually gone out and painted in a while but i miss it you know like graffiti was a very 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 big part of my life for a long time have and, you had cats come to you though and be like hey man can you design something for me oh yeah lots of times like right. yeah lots of times like a lot of a lot of the um I get it. Yeah. Like over the last probably year or so, I've done maybe 50 or 60 different logos for people's and, and things like that along the time. And um, they use them for shirts and merch and things like that. Yeah, I've yeah. always just been kind of a letters guy, though. So I'm not a characters person. Whereas a name that I rap with, he's a tattoo artist. So he's amazing at characters and things yeah. like that. So it kind of gelled. We both have some killer art together, too. So it stems off of music as well. Oh, you that's know? cool, man. It sounds like you guys have like real good chemistry. Yeah. 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 Just different mediums of being artistic really you know yeah yeah oh mean bro so uh are you and anim gonna do any more albums or um or you don't know yeah you... like we we've got a few tracks in the tuck that's the we started a few different songs and then it was like what are we gonna do with these they're either gonna sit here for a year or two while we 
muck around doing our own shit because he's got he's he's working on a project which is like three or four different albums into one like i ain't gonna spread the news but he got he's got a pretty cool theme of how he's doing it and like so he's working on a solo project he's just waiting to build the studio at home he's working on his own house he's got a house now and stuff and um just in, in auckland yeah 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 he, oh. no well he, he he had a pretty lucky little little piece of land off the back of his old and, oh, and you know what man, i mean so he got man. he got a good little jump on yeah, that but, yeah yeah um, well if you if you own a piece of land in oh Auckland, man, man yeah, you yeah, made it you made it yeah yeah <laughs> so his whole thing is just like he's told me he's just kind of chilling off the music he doesn't want to push it until it's done so he can actually be creative in a space when he wants to instead of having to force yourself to go out to people's places and do it when it's you know what i mean so um but yeah the bro's working on a couple he's got a lot of fucking killer tracks you know what i mean i've got i've got a few um lined up i just released a new album two months ago rap songs and sing yeah albums. bro dope album bro. thank you bro thank you it's 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 one of the best album albums i've heard in, in a while man thank you bro. i appreciate time, that a lot you know like and, and that was a lot of that was experimenting bro just like playing with the sounds like i was saying and just yeah. it was different from me you know what i mean and a few of the songs were a bit older too just um i'll be waiting that was two or three years old that song i was about two years old because it was going to go on the phd album before that the one that uh, had a million downloads yeah, yeah, one. Yep. but um we just met a new manager and stuff. Like we were, we were kind of in a weird place of where we want to take this and stuff. They picked up on the sample. Then they started emailing like labels in the UK trying to get the sample cleared. I'm like, yo, what'd you even say anything for? You know, like, <laughs> it's not like it's going crazy. And um, so we pulled that track off at that point just to wait and see what happened. Got it, man. Got Bro, it. so got it. I reckon that track could have really pushed that PhD album a bit further out, you know, just pushed the boat out a bit further. Sample clearance is a bitch, man. It's honestly. a bitch, but they that's, came back. That's they... why That's why when I, I, I do production, I just do it all myself. Yeah, bro. No samples, because then you don't have to worry about yeah. copyright issues. Nah, onto it, bro. <laughs> yeah, they came back. They're like, oh, yeah, 6,000 euros. Like, bro, are you dreaming? <laughs> like, bro... And that, six thousand euros yeah that's what they said to use it and it was like shit all right man Mill, we're pulling this you yeah. know and and then it we were trying to get them into a point where it was just pretty much a let us use this you can take the the profit almost you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? it was going to get to that point where it's like let us just put this out you know what i mean and see what happens yeah but um so yeah we just held off on that for ages and then i decided that i was going to put my next album out as more of a street album and a mixtape so i just didn't put it on to all the dsps you know what i mean and i just kind of yeah. held it down and i just put it out that way and it had a really good response you know what i mean just because i was doing it a bit different i wasn't going for the spotify thing and stuff so i was like anybody who wants to hear this holla you know what i mean and it had a great response and i was proud of that so did you because you did battle rap for a while you did uh, yeah because you did a bit of stuff for one ounce yeah man would you ever get back into battle rap i get hit up almost every event <laughs> <laughs> like it, it, it's quite deep i get hit up quite a lot to do it again but um yeah, yeah dealers dealers asked me to do it yeah and i've got a few of my boys who are like you should do it man you should do it i'm i'm keen to do it but i just need to set the time aside because yo man you you don't want to be unprepared when you go into those <laughs> Bro, those battles man otherwise you just get murdered that, that's one of the biggest reasons i stopped to be honest like a lot of those guys that do the battle rap thing they battle rap that's you know all they that's do that's what they do you know yeah. what i mean so it was like when i was taking on battles i did eight or nine of them I got flown to Aussie and shit. Like I, I had a pretty good run with the battles and stuff. And I think my first four or five were definitely a lot better than my tail end of the ones I was doing. Just when I pick up a battle, I kind of push music away for two or three months. You know what I mean? Cause I felt like I had to give it my all. I had to, I was waking up in the middle of the night, spitting the battle raps. Like, do I still remember this? Is yeah, it there? Yeah. You know, like, and turning up to work and doing my pre-ops and spitting the raps, you know? And it was just like, it, it, it consumes your life. Because you don't want to jump up on that stage and fuck it up. You know what I mean? So it was oh, like, yeah, man. Bro, and, and I said that I had D-Lar on my show maybe two or three weeks ago. And I was like telling him, you know, you're, you're crafting six minutes of material to spit one time. You get one chance of that shit. It's not yeah. like you can go home afterwards like, nah, this is how that was meant to go. You know what <laughs> I mean? It's like you get one chance and it's live. It's in front of a crowd. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's like practicing everything in your bedroom and stuff and having it like this on lock. I had a few moments of stumbles up there. Like, you know what I mean? I was lucky that that muscle memory comes in from being a performer and it just, you say that line before and it takes you back into it. But at the same time, um, yeah, I feel like the battle rap thing, I how much respect I have for the dudes that really put their all into it. You know what I mean? But I think a lot of the guys at the top, they don't make music. So they have a lot of focus into one creative space whereas i was pushing away all of the music stuff i wanted to do i was part of a crew that was doing well 
Yeah. And so, yeah, the battle thing, like, as much as I loved it, it just started consuming a lot of time, bro. You know what I mean? So I, w- I would I would do it again, I think, but it sounds eat ass to say if there was money in it or, you know what I mean, where, where, where it was justified to take that time off of the stuff that I'm actually really passionate about. Yeah. You know, and that's what it became to me. That's when I pulled back. It was like, what do I want to do? You know what I mean? Like, the battle thing was popping when I was doing it. That's why... Well, it's gotten even bigger now. I mean, shout-outs to D-Lo and, and the One Outs crew that have yeah, like, made it big, man. It was big, big. And, and, and globally, it's fucking huge, you know what yeah. I mean? It's like some of these battle rappers in the States make 50 grand to battle. Yeah. Big big artists getting paid like 200,000 US to battle and stuff, you know? Like, it's huge, huge. But um, if that's not the the lane you're trying to, to go for 100%, then it's kind of... You know what I mean? It's like... I felt like why jump in and be half-assing it? You know what I mean? I'd rather step back and do the stuff I'm passionate about, making music. Well, I respect the scene so much, and I got so much respect for Dila that I wouldn't want to do it unless I was doing it 100%. Yeah. Because then I kind of feel like you're letting the culture down too. That's it. That Yeah, yeah, that's it too. You know, like, and I've I've been there a lot of times where dudes... Well, I've seen some of the videos, uh, of some of the battles and where some dudes choke, and I'm like... Oh man! Yeah, like, I was asking because I met Pfeck about. Oh uh, yeah, uh, but yeah. he's great. He's great. He, he's the he's guy. the best we've had, I think. Bro, I, I said to I said to Dila before after his jibs battle. Yeah, I said to him, bro, this is the guy. This is the guy you need this, to invest. Yeah, yeah, into, this is bro, the guy. Like, this is the guy. And then when I uh, hollered at Pfeck to get on a track, and oh, and that's I, right. Yeah, I played that on the show. Yeah, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's a super nice guy, man. Yeah. Super nice guy. And I asked him, I'm like, yo, man, how do you? How do you structure everything? Because if you listen to his battles, he's he's very much structured in terms yeah. of each round. Yeah. And how does he m- memorize it all in such quick amount of time? And he said, oh, because of the nature of his work, he he writes scripts and stuff, so he's he's constantly yeah. memorizing stuff. So I was blown away the first time I seen that guy. Like I I I think I said that to Dila a few weeks ago too. Just like. He was one of those guys that put one of those audition videos up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was dope as hell. And it got lots of love, hundreds of likes. And people fucking, oh, this guy's the best. And I was like, and I was one of the doubters in the comments. Like, this is great, bro. But just wait till you're on stage. It just changes. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're in yeah. your room. You. That dude went up there and smoked it, bro. Like, like he was a veteran, done a hundred battles. You know what I mean? And it was amazing to watch. And it was like, okay, times have changed. These guys that are jumping up now, they've studied this for a very long yeah, time. They've yeah. studied... He could have studied battle rap for five or ten years before. Well, he, he t- he'd, he'd done he'd done quite a bit of study. And the reason why he hadn't entered before, he's like, eh. he didn't think the scene was the greatest back then. But yeah. uh, back in the box cutter and devastated days, and and, stuff. and to be honest, it, it, that was the earlier years of it. So, but it you wasn't had to you had to do that to get to, to, get to where to it the, is. That's yeah, right, yeah. Bro. So, I mean, yeah, man. When I watched that battle with PFAC and Jibs, man, I was like, oh, yeah. And you could just see the crowd and even some of the other battlers. Um, oh, just oh, like this guy's oh, a man. fucking like, problem. Because Jibs, Jibs is, brings the fire, man. Yeah, so, yeah. Jibs was that guy to that moment. Yeah, you know and shout I mean? outs to Jibs because he didn't need to put PFAC on their level. He kind of yeah, yeah, handed yeah. the torch in some hell ways. Yeah. yeah, I was there, I think, that night too. And and um, yeah, like Jibs, yeah, shout outs to Jibs. Jibs was that guy for a very long time. He, w- he, was, our, he was our bread and butter guy, you know what I mean? But he, we didn't realize we had all these little young gunners that have been studying this, man. They're coming <laughs> for the kill, bro. It's crazy. Well, like, they're hungry, man. They're hungry. Super hungry. Bro, we went to the um, the One Outs event. I think it was two weeks ago, the loyalty event. And that had like um, Stash and Tracer and dudes battling for the titles. And it, yeah, it was yeah. a really cool event. And um, yeah, just the, the level it's come to over the last few years, you can see people are taking it a bit differently. You know oh, I mean? yeah. Like, they definitely take it a bit more seriously. <laughs> and, yeah. the, and the buzziest part about it is like half of the battle rap thing is Christian now. It's fuzzy, bro. I swear to but God, like dude, dude, some five of the, or six some of the battles are full on Christians and they're just spitting them bars, you know, but yeah, they got yeah. gun bars and it. it's kind of crazy, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's weird. Yeah. Some of the best dudes are like Christian rappers. Um, I'm not, you played uh unchained XL. Yeah. 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 He's, yeah. he's another one of those. Oh, really? Dudes. Yeah. Bro, he's yeah. amazing. Where the hell did that guy come yeah, from? Bro, bro, He's been, he's been around for a while. I actually want to try and get him on here. He was supposed to be on the track with me and PFAC. Yeah. But uh, he had a real busy schedule, so he couldn't do it. But bro, bro he he's bro, he brings fire, man. Man, like I played, I've played, I've got Saint Teed up to play on the show on Tuesday. I'm gonna play one of his, but I played yeah. something. I played a 64 bar verse that he dropped. The yeah, other week. yeah, that was that's that was the first time I'd seen this guy. I'm like, yo, where's this guy <laughs> come from? And I was just blown away at like so much respect for someone that has the skills like that, and to not get the nod for the 64 Red Bull bar. It's like, mate, 
I'll do this myself. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, and I'm yeah. sure he'll get the call up to do it properly. I mean, but, he's got he's got quite a few videos on YouTube and Facebook where he's just spinning bars, man. Yeah, and and I was blown away, man. When I seen that, I was like, this guy deserves a Red Bull spot, you know what I mean? But instead of him waiting for it, he created his own video, yeah. the same vibe, the black and white. It was dope, you know? And I was like, good on you, man. You I'd know? actually be real keen to see at the New Zealand Music Awards one of those uh, those cypher battles, yeah. the black and white cypher battles, bring yeah. them back like they did at BET. Bro. That'd be cool, man. That would be dope. I... I to be honest, I had an idea that like I was going to do it with part of the Broke Artist thing. And um, I had five dope killer MCs all lined up. I had a really cool location to do it and stuff. And I was kind of kind of trying to do a bit of a team backpack vibe, you know what I mean? But um, And it still may happen. Like I've still got the dudes on deck. I've still got the spot. But it's just – it's a time and – Well, I, I met uh, the director, I think, of the New- Vodafone New Zealand Music Awards yeah. a couple of years ago because I used to work at APRA oh, back yeah, in the dope, day. Dope. So I met him. But uh, yeah, man, I think I, if you could pitch it to him and you could show him the cypher videos and stuff, I think, yeah. they, I think they would be open to doing it, eh? Oh, yeah. I'd be mean and then just bring back some of the old school dudes as well. The like legends Mar- too, yeah, Mareko, yeah, yeah. Mareko, David Dallas, and yeah. Yeah. And even, yeah, man, for I'll be, I'll be so keen to see it all. It would be great. And that's the perfect platform right there, like yeah, at yeah. that night in Spark Arena. You know what I mean? Like I've always thought that stuff. Um, I was thinking of a few different ideas to do stuff similar with my show, like to do that, like to turn up to events and kind of do like a live broke artist show, whereas you, you cut away to the live act instead of cut away to the music, you know what I mean? But having a way to be able to broadcast that in an actual club or, you know what I mean? Like there's a lot of different things you could do. to. Yeah. Well, that's why even with this show, when I have a musician on, I try and get them to do something at the end of the podcast. Yeah. 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 Just. Just to show off their skills, you know, That's particularly it. when, you know, it's, it's it's a rapper or even a singer or even I got a piano here. So someone needs to get right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't, yeah. Uh, Bust out some Alicia Keys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Styles. I wish, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, nah, it's it's cool, man. You play any instruments like you play? Or? I do play piano. Well, yeah. I used it a lot for uh, music production. Yeah, mainly. Don't. yeah, yeah. But it'd be cool to get a DJ in here as well and do some scratching. Bro, you shit. scissor hands, bro. Like. Definitely. Bro, have you have you ever tried scratching? Nah, not really. Like I, a little I, bit, just playing. I, I tried. Yeah. I tried it. And I was yeah. like, oh no. Nah, I'll, I'll stick me. to I'm, I'll stick to making beats. Man. I look like an idiot. <laughs> well, I'm doing it in front of dudes that have win like world champ. Or you know, like yeah, I'm gonna stop, bro. Yeah, I'm way better making the sound with my mouth and moving my hands. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, they say it. They say it takes ten thousand hours to get proficient at something. Yeah. But then there's some things you can pick up, and you're like, oh, yo, I'm pretty good. at I this. I got this instantly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Feel, yeah. But then there's some things that's like, ah. Oh, yeah. Nah, I'll leave that. Th- that's what it feels like pretty much any time I pick up an instrument. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, oh, this can, is so cool. Can you, can you play any instruments? Nah, bro. Like I, I've I've tried over the years. Like I went to Mainz for a bit and they try to teach you how to play the guitar and stuff. And it's like I wanted to, but just my passion's always been writing and I've just never been able to. I think once I stop pushing the writing and I'll probably later on in life, I'll pick up an instrument and yeah, yeah. teach myself somehow. But um, So when, yeah. you're, when, you're, when you're writing... So when you're writing, do you just write whatever comes down first or do you kind of work out a punchline and then try to work out how it's, to link it up? It's changed a lot, bro. Like like I was saying over the last year, my my music creating has changed a lot. For years, it was I would write everything down. Like I would write – I pretty much just start at the start and go with it. You know what I mean? Like sometimes you'd have a good punchline and you'd work that backwards into things and things like that. But um, back back – Five, ten years ago, everything was on paper. Everything was pretty much start to finish, no, right, this. boom. And I don't even write anymore. It's, it's been just a year. On the phone. It's been a year. No, I don't even write on my phone. You know what I mean? Like, I put a beat on. Are you doing a Jay-Z? I, I've, done that, I've done that for years, like, but it wasn't every song. It would be certain beats would bring that out of you. And you, you, you could hear. I could structure a verse within the first five minutes of hearing the beat, like, knowing what it was going to be about and kind of the direction. And then it's pretty much just piecing it all together. Yeah, yeah. That way. Um, yeah, there's been quite a lot of songs over the years that were like that, like a track called gone, but not forgotten and songs like that were, were, they were about four or five years ago, but I knew, I knew from the beat, the topic, what I, the content I was going to put on it. And I could almost hear it instantly, just like not really having the actual words, but I could hear the way the patterns were going to go. I could feel the whole thing out and you start flickering bits. You're like, Ooh, that's that, you know? And, and, and before you know it, I would structure a verse in my brain and be able to spit it out. And now it's not so structured in that sense. I pretty much find the beat. I normally started a hook now. I sing my, you know, or whatever. But it's like, I 
I can build off of it now. I can make a song in a half hour. And it's pretty much, it's not freestyling, but it's it like is some Tupac shit. It's right? like a freestyle <laughs> thing, you know what I mean? Like I can put it on and I can hear what the next part needs. I can hear where it needs to go up or down, or if I need to bring a rap in to change it up. And yeah. And that's that's been a lot of the fun over the last year. And um yeah, so my last year of creating, like that whole last album, I didn't write any of that. You know what I mean? Like I just Oh, that was just experimentation. Exper and... Except for the few tracks that were written previously for other albums, like I'll yeah. Be Waiting. There was there was two or three on that album that were that were actually made for other projects that never went on. Yeah. But um, besides that, everything with all the singing stuff and stuff, it, it normally starts with just that one melody and I build off of it. You know what I mean? And it's like, um, yeah, I, the contrast of singing and rapping to me is where I'm trying to find my balance right now. You know what I mean? And just trying to just find my own lane with it. You know what I mean? So it normally starts with, it could start with a rap, but it's normally singing now and, and it'll start with a bit of a singing hook or a bridge or something. And then I'll build off that and then just keep melodizing. Before I know it, I'm about four minutes into the song. It's like, fuck, I just wrote a mean song, like without even trying, you know? And I step back like, and then, and then at other times I'm still doing it the same way, but there's like a song I'm working on now. It's called um, Legacy. It's probably going to be my next single. I've been working on it for about three weeks, but in the same sense, like I'll just go in my room and I'll spend 20 minutes on it. I'll spend a half hour on it and just kind of, add that next four, add that next eight, add the next 16. And now it's, yeah, it's, it's over three minutes. It's, it's pretty much a song done now. You know what I mean? But it's just, I didn't really have a, a planned attack for it. I've just kind of gone in there and chipped away at it, chipped away at it when I was feeling yeah. inspired. And I think that's coming back to the very first thing, having my own creative space and it making, um, yeah, just giving me a bit more flexibility to go in there when I'm create when I want to be inspired and creative as opposed to, booking a studio time two weeks out and you need to be creative that day. What happens if, if you're working <coughs> with uh, another rapper? Like if you're jumping on his track and you hear his verse before yours, then are you a bit more like, oh shit, man, I got to come with some hard shit. It depends, you know, like for, for, for a long time, it used to be that way. You know what I mean? For a lot, long time, the rap competitiveness would come out in that sense. You know what I mean? And I, and, and it still does, but in this day and age, like, I'm pretty happy. I'm just like, yo, I'm me, I'm myself. And that's cool, man. It's changed a lot over the years. Whereas 10 years ago, you wanted to mimic what you liked. You know what I mean? You liked hardcore rap, so you would try to rap hardcore. But it's like, I know hardcore, motherfucker. You know what I mean? And it's like, I realized that over the last X amount of years, it's like, you don't need to try to be anything but yourself. You know what I mean? If people like you, they like you. That's, that's what it comes down to. So when someone will send me a, a track and their verse is flames, it's like, it's not off-putting. It's like, I'm just going to add my my touch to this and hopefully they like it and they normally do and we're good, you know? Um, one artist I want to give a shout out to is True Nelly. He is one artist that, um, he's an inspiring dude to work with. Like, he'll send me something. He'll send me just a hook, but I'll send him a verse back in an hour. Like, and we've done that back and forth about five or six times where we'll send each other saying and we'll have that song back in an hour or within a 24-hour period, like, laced up, done, you know, and there's only a couple people that I've met over 15, 20 years where it's that chemistry of being able to like, yo, here's that hook. You, you feeling it? And instead of him saying, yeah, he'll send me the verse back recorded, you know, and it's like, so he's one of those dudes. And, and same with the name. Like, that's yeah, how yeah. we've been. He's probably the only other guy, to be honest. You know what I mean? Whereas like we have that chemistry of you feeling this? And it's like before even saying, yeah, it's done, you know. So I want to shout out to True Nelly, bro, hardest worker in New Zealand, pretty much straight up. Good, man, good uh, man. I found when uh, when I wanted to get PFAC on a track, I was like, nah, man, I gotta, I gotta come with some hard ass shit. Oh yeah, bro, you're creative, <laughs> eh, bro. Yeah, I was like, bro, I, I like that otherwise... was a great song though. Yeah, yeah man, I, I'd because uh, I made the beat and stuff. I had no idea with it. I'd never met the guy, never yeah. talked to him or anything. I just hollered at him and be like, hey, man, big fan of you, and yeah, I think it's cool what you're doing. Do you wanna, uh, do you wanna do a track? But he had no recording gear because he doesn't do that stuff so, that's right yeah so I, I, drove, I didn't know he rapped like yeah, on beat yeah yeah so I, I drove up to Auckland with all my gear wow went to his workplace and just set up a mobile setup yeah so he could he could do it Dope, bro. yeah yeah and then I was like yo man do you mind doing the hook if I give you the lyrics for the hook and yeah. he's like yeah and he just spit the hook as wow, well so dope, bro. yeah cool, that man. turned out great bro like that was a good song man yeah like, yeah it, yeah it cool. I was gutted I couldn't get Unchained on, but yo man it's, it's, I was stoked that PFAC agreed to do it man because yeah. he didn't have to do it nah he could have been like Oh man, you're yeah. below me. <laughs> no, nah, but like I didn't know he even had recorded music. You know what I mean? So when I heard him on that, I was like, "Oh, we sound nice." Yeah, yeah I, I didn't. Yeah, I don't think he has actually. Or he might. I think I heard him on a a cipher. I think yeah. he did a cipher with his church. Because I hit him up when I first started the broke artist thing, and I was like, "Hey man, got any tracks I can play? Like I'm a fan of what you do." Like, yeah. 
And he was like, nah, not really, not yet, but I'm working on it, you know, blah, blah. I really want to get him on here at some point. I think he's overseas at the moment, like doing some... Oh, yeah. Well, he, he did he did a battle in the UK, I think, and he's done some stuff. In... It was in the woods or something. Yeah, 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 yeah Bro, no, right. <laughs> I saw that pop up on my feed, and it was only the other day when D-Lar was like, yeah, no, that was an actual battle. I never, excuse me, I never watched it. I was like, I didn't get what it was. And then when he said that, I was like, oh, I need to go back and watch that. Yeah. Like, good on that dude, bro. It's pretty, it's pretty good, man. It's pretty good. He, I can see a lot of his stuff going easily over Come people's man. heads, though. Yeah, bro. Smash the V, my bro. Man, my man, my man. Yeah, man. It was a long drive down here, bro. Yeah, the man. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Hopefully, Huntley, uh, that bypass gets finished soon, man, so we don't have to... Yo, no, it was actually a pretty sweet ride. It was only once... Um, Google Maps told me like, yeah, hang a left. You're going to save six minutes. I'm like, oh, I'm about that life, you know? And I'm like, turn off some side road, bro. And I'm like, where the fuck am I? And I'm like, I'll turn it off because it said 12Ks make a ride. I'm like, oh, I'll turn it off, save my battery. I'll throw my Google Maps back on. Yeah. When I turn it back on, it's like, you turn, you turn. I'm like, oh no, bro. And it added about 20 minutes to my trip. I was like, shit. When you're, when you're out in those rural areas, bro, you're like, oh shit, man. I don't want to break down anymore. Oh, bro, man. I'm running out of gas. I'm like, <laughs> Late as hell, I'm like, oh, well, we go and get there, man, like straight up. How, because obviously I've, I've moved out of Auckland four years ago. Yeah. How, how, how I mean, do you, do you notice the traffic getting worse and worse there? I do, bro, but like, yeah, one of, one of the biggest advantages of my work hours and stuff like that is I miss it, you know what I mean? Like oh, I start yeah, at course. five, bro, so I, when I get up, there's no one on the roads, it's dark out. On my way home, it's one thirty. it's like just past the lunchtime break, so I actually got a pretty smooth roll. And I only work like 10 minutes from my house. You oh, know? bro, so that, you're living the dream, man. Living the fuck. Yeah, living the dream. Like I've been offered some different jobs for more money and it's like weighing up sitting in traffic and things like that. You know what I mean? And it's like, I'm happy where I'm at, man. You know what I mean? I get up 20 minutes before work, jump up, boom, 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 I'm out. And I'm, you know, and I'm there. Whereas I think commuting to work would be a hard, hard thing for me. You know what I mean? Like, like we were well, saying. Particularly, particularly if you're not used to it oh mate like if, if you're if that's that's all you've done then you'd be i you'd mean be, that, okay now okay getting older like you know what i mean me and my wife looking you know we want to buy a house eventually and stuff like that and we're trying to figure out how the hell that's going to work because it ain't going to work in auckland you know what i mean and nah, it's like man, that's why i had to move bro to yeah buy this place yeah congrats bro like that that's that's the goal you know eventually and and that's kind of one of the good things of the company i work for is like they're all over australia and stuff so i could I could bounce, I could transfer to Melbourne, I could transfer to Sydney or Nelson or Tauranga. Oh, that's They're cool, all bro. over the place. So it's like, that does work. And it's just kind of figuring out what would suit our lifestyles. And I think becoming older now and um, just being a lot more self-sufficient with the music and stuff, I've always been scared of hell. I would never move out of Auckland because that's where all my resources yeah, and dude, mates, that, you know. I was, I was the same, It bro. couldn't even happen in my mind. Like, yeah. it, it wasn't even a possibility, you know what I mean? Whereas now... I make all my music videos. I record all my stuff. I mix all my stuff. I there's nothing like I do it all at home. I'm a homebody. I, I I chill at home. That's you know what I mean. I pay through the roof rent for my house because it's it's a killer house. But it's like I I look at it like, what else do I do? I'm home. I create. You know what I mean. Yeah. I might as well have. A, well, awesome, you can do that anywhere. Yeah. 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 That's that's what I that's what I'm learning now in my older age. You know what I mean. But it's like. Yeah, like I pay over 600 bucks a week rent, you know what I mean? And that's Shit. just, it's wild, bro. It's three quarters of my wage a week, you know, but it's, it's an amazing place and I've got my own room to be, do, do you know what I mean? So it yeah. was like weighing that stuff up and we, and we actually got it. It's, it's, it's probably worth about 800 bucks a week. So it's, it's like a killer house, you know what I mean? And, um, I keep saying to my wife, I was like, man, maybe we need to downgrade and find something cheaper. You save some money and blah, blah, blah. And she's like, we're going to move out of here and we're not going to find anything even half as big for 600 bucks and it's like oh man you know so it's like i think our next step out of this place will be trying to move somewhere else maybe nelson or christchurch or just trying to find somewhere that would we could adapt to and i've got a 13 year old daughter that's another big one bro like oh uh, you were moving, schooling bro. they don't like that bro like yeah aussie's always been on the cards for me like as a musician i love i love aussie same like so much you know what i mean and, and just being a, a musician and through that and then like with my work, like I'm a glass cutter by trade and stuff like that. Um, being able to move over to Melbourne or Sydney or something like that, but I'd make another 20 bucks an hour doing what I do. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And I've looked into it. Like, the, only, it's like, the only thing I hate is because they've changed the the rules now. So if you're not an Australian citizen, you're not entitled to all the, the same oh, benefits. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, and I'm not even a New Zealand citizen. So that's the hard part. That's that oh, was, true. Dude, I've got to get work visas. Every time I go there for a gig, I need a, I need a tourist visa. Oh, and stuff. It's, it's painful, bro. 
Are you gonna Are you gonna get citizenship here? I've always kept my American one just in case music or something popped off, and yeah, in yeah. case I wanted to move back. And yeah, now I'm at the stage where, like, because they wouldn't let me play for the New Zealand hockey team anymore because I was an American passport holder. Like, oh, that's so nice. my early ages, I used to play for New Zealand. I'd go overseas, we'd kill it, you know yeah. what I mean. And then eventually, they'd be like, "Hold up, man, you're an American," you know. And it was like, "Oh, I've lived here over half my life," you know. But it's the citizenship that was holding me back, you know. Yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think now is definitely a time to start looking into it if we are going to maybe move overseas or something. But like so I was saying, if, if you were to move out of Auckland, like what's your ideal place? Like what places do you like besides Auckland? Um, because I imagine with all the touring, you've you've visited a lot of places. In a New lot Zealand. of places. Um, yeah, it's a hard one. Like you know what I mean. My my wife has family up north, about four hours up north and stuff like that, where it's a really quiet lifestyle. You know. Um, Except during summer. Yeah, yeah, then it's just crazy. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, we went up there in the summer. It was amazing, man. We went through, like, bush hikes to, like, waterfalls. It was beautiful. But um, to live-wise, uh, Nelson was really cool. Like, that was somewhere we, Nelson, we've been yeah. not so long ago, and I, I really kind of just like the vibe of it. Um, Christchurch is really good. I just like the artistic feel of it. You know what I mean? Like, I, I haven't actually been there long enough every time we do gigs there we're most places we do gigs we're there for 24 hours you know so you don't really get to see you a don't lot get of... the feel of the the place yeah <clears throat> but um i'm going there for three days sometime in august and yeah. i haven't been there in like 15 years so. oh wow so yeah. this is like way before the even first there, earthquakes, earthquakes and so, stuff, yeah so i'll be interested to see the difference actually yeah. yeah yeah it's deep like i've been to christchurch probably about three or four times in the last year or two and um yeah, it's deep. Like the, the 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 last time I went back, you could see progress, but the first couple of times before that, it seemed like it was the same, you know. And I could see why locals would be frustrated and like, you know, what's going on. Whereas the last time I went back, it looked like their city was slowly forming a little bit, you know what I mean. Whereas before that, we we got booked to. Oh, it was on our tour actually, and we got booked, and um, we were staying in the city. They were like, "Where do you guys want to stay?" Kind of thing. We're like, "Oh, in in the city, you know, we want to be close to food and blah blah blah." And dude. That was the furthest from food. And it, <laughs> mate, we were in like the CBD, but there was nothing there. Everything was closed and fenced and it was it was a construction site. You know what I mean? They had like a little container, um, like a little container mall kind of thing that did food. But that was only to about six o'clock. And then it was like, we were struggling to find a dairy, you know? So it was like, yeah, pretty crazy. That was like maybe three years ago the yeah. last time. But then the time after that, we went back. It was a lot more built up. There was a lot more things happening, you know? Uh, yeah i mean that's i worry a bit for wellington man if an earthquake happens there Welling, because, wellington would definitely be this the one i would say i, like, I do love wellington i love I don't, wellington. I, I don't i don't like have you ever driven around the streets there the, the, oh the, yeah bro <laughs> yeah i went there for my um for my apprenticeship like that's where they do the glass apprenticeships down there and yeah, um, yeah. yeah i went and stayed there for a week and i drove down and that was the that was the one and only time i've ever been in wellington with my own car and just kind of cruising around and it was like that. i was like shit this is frustrating bro you know <laughs> But, but there's I, some of them real tight ass roads and the streets are so narrow and you're turning around and you're like, fuck ooh, man, I hope, is, I hope a dude doesn't hit me. Yeah, big yeah. time. But yeah. um, but yeah, I love Wellington, man. That would that would be the place I could live. I, yeah. I think, that, uh, yeah, like after Auckland, that would be, but I'm, I'm sure price-wise, it's not the... Well, I know house prices are cheaper there, but yeah. in terms of renting, it's even worse than Auckland. Yeah, I bet, man. Because a lot of students are there, I guess. Yeah, God. yeah, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I mean... I, I miss Auckland quite a bit. I miss the multicultural aspect of Auckland. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Yeah. I and then, then further south you move, you start to realize, oh man, there's quite a lot of white people here. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I noticed that even in Cambridge, man, I'm driving around Cambridge because I got family in Cambridge. Yeah. You walk around the town on the weekends and it's just like, oh man, there's these heaps of white people here. Yeah. And my partner's Indian, so she notices that. Oh, uh, yeah, I bet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hard out. I mean, yeah, I love that too. Like, um, just down the bottom of my road, there's a um, like one of those night markets every Saturday night. Like I'll probably hit that with the fams tonight and that, you know. And um, yeah, just going through those kind of things, you realize how multicultural we are in Auckland. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's just cool, man. hundreds of different styles of food. Everything's busy. People are popping, and it's like the culturals, the races, everything there. It's, it's real. Yeah, I enjoy that kind of stuff. Like I actually want to go and shoot a music video in one of those places and just stand in the middle and just watch it all. Just unfold around you yeah, the whole time yeah, you know yeah. what i mean like some yeah i got some cool ideas for vids i want to do but eventually but it's just um because do you do you do you shoot the music videos or do you get someone I, else to do it currently like f 
for years, I always paid other people, but over the last two or three years, I've started to shoot all our own videos nice. and edit everything myself and stuff. Um, I, I w really wanted to pursue the video kind of as more of a career, you know, making videos and things like that. But then I realized I wanted to make my own music videos. That's hard to shoot. It's hard to shoot videos for yourself, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. I, I, when I've had to do it for myself, I, I always have someone be like, hey, man, can you just... Yeah. Like and and I do me, that. I keep it straight, but sometimes these poo dudes are amateurs, man. They yeah, don't yeah. know what they're doing. I do that a lot of the times, you know what I mean? But um, more recently, I've I've just figured out how to do it myself, you know what I mean? Like, I'll go out, I've got the tripod, I'll set up the different angles so I have the movements, you know what I mean? And then um, the drones really added a big aspect oh, to it. drones are bro. awesome, bro. I'll, Cause, I'll, cause I'll you've got the, a drone, eh? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'll set the drone maybe a meter away from me, eye level. Yeah. Just with the wind resistant, it gets the movement. Yeah, so yeah. it's not a tripod, you know what I mean? So yeah. I, I've learned to kind of just use the little tricks I can to have the equipment I have kind of assist me in shooting my own self. What, you know? what type of drone do you have? Um, a Phantom 4K. Because they have the ability, I think if you, you can select it, so it follows you. It follows you, but you have to have the remote. So if I'm walking around with the remote, it's, uh, that's the problem, bro. And I've thought about that. How can I throw it in a backpack and then it just follow me around? Yeah, yeah. But every time I've tried to do that, it's never worked. I don't know if, I, yeah, I'm doing, not doing something. Like I was um, up north that summer when I was telling you about how I was seeing the waterfalls and that. Um, where my wife's sister and that stay, they stay up in like kind of like a high, like, yeah, just secluded area. And I was going to fly the drone as I drove through like the little desert roads and try to get it to follow the car, but it just wouldn't sync up because there's no satellites and yeah, things like that, yeah. you know? So it's like trying those kind of things in those places don't work as well as trying it in Auckland where there would, it would get connection. Yeah. Because of the GPS yeah. signal. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that's definitely a really cool thing I've wanted to try out because you just set it to a certain height hey, and it just sticks to whatever's. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because I've done some, I've done some pretty cool uh, drone videos, but I really wanted to get my license, like a full-on proper license, yeah. but they're pretty expensive. Yeah. I think it's like 5K, 10K just for the license. I remember when I first got one, I'd have people like commenting, I was, you're not allowed to do that. Yeah, like, bro, yeah. Get the fuck out of here, bro. I don't even know who you are, bro. Why are you looking at my video, bro? <laughs> you're not allowed to fly over a road. All right, bro. To block, you know. <laughs> well, but, have you have you actually, because the CAA have a map, a map of actually where you're allowed to fly? Yeah. And bro, most of the, the country's covered, man. You can't fly anywhere. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then you add on the fact that the council have their own rules in regards to drones. And oh yeah, like I've definitely been a guerrilla marketing kind of <laughs> drone dude. You know what I mean? Like, but I'm safe with it and stuff like that. And normally when I put it up, well, don't fly. Like, it through, some people fly them in the airports. Obviously, don't yeah, yeah. That's that. a, that's dumbass. That's, that's when I see that on stuff. I'm like, oh, bro, killing this for You're, everyone. Yeah, bro, man. You know? By being like, a dumbass you know and those people are just trying to do that they're just trying to be idiots you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? they're just trying to cause a little bit of hysteria for a second but what that's going to do is shut it down for everyone you yeah know? totally Hard there's out. always that one fucking idiot that yeah. just has to ruin it for everyone no matter yeah. what it is big time bro yeah yeah Hard. oh true bro <sighs> so um where else have you flown your drone besides up north um oh bro all over bro like i took it to christchurch and um, flew it above the cathedral and all around oh, there, nice. bro. Like, bro, that was the most the beautiful footage. We've got a video called Lit. Um, oh, any, yeah, bro. Anybody watching yeah, this, yeah. go and check that out. And, like, there's a bit where I, um, I'm i holding it on a on a, on a a green screen pretty much. And then, like, it's doing the drone thing. And then I pull back and I just flick it out. And, and the paper goes flying back. And it comes back through the shot like that. Um, check that out. That, that, was, that was some killer drone footage of the cathedral, that part there. Um, I've flown it all over the South Island. I took the fam away and that was what I took as my carry on luggage was the drone. Nice. I was like, oh, I'll wear a backpack with a couple of gears. I'll buy some things along the way. But I wanted to have that to experience. Um, I'm trying to think of where the hell the place was. There was um, a place just out of Christchurch that was really Hamner Springs. That's what oh, it was called. Yeah. But an amazing, amazing place. If you ever get a chance to go there, go there, people. Like it's a beautiful place. They've got a really cool like swimming pool aqua arena thing whatever with slides and stuff for the kids it was it was amazing but um just the drive into there from christchurch there was like these amazing cliff tops and stuff like that and i flew it out over that i used that footage in some videos as two over the years but um yeah just flying it in different places away from auckland you see some beautiful stuff hey? Na you would nature know, yeah bro. natural scenery bro yeah man i I'm, my my partner hasn't been to the south island yet, yeah so i've said to her i'm like look the South Island is a different beast. To the it North. is. It is a different beast. Yeah. Way more, way more laxed and relaxed. Like, cause the last time we went, we drove from, um, 
from Christchurch to Nelson yeah. with the whole fam and stuff. And it, it was great. Like minus my baby had just got chicken pox. So it was like, oh. bro, it was a nightmare, but it was amazing. You know what I mean? Like we, we booked this trip and the, the night we got to Christchurch, we seen the spot starting to come up and I was like, oh shit. And we don't know where we're at and we're trying to find a pharmacist and there was none open. And it was like, oh man, we didn't have calamine. The calamine lotion had blown up on the plane. It yeah, was yeah. like, oh, it was a nightmare. But, um, yeah, it was a great experience for our family just to travel through the South Island all together and just see how other people live. You know what I mean? Like you'd come to like little places where there was probably three or four people lived in that little town. You know what I mean? And they have one shop and and it was yeah. just the gas station and the cafe kept that little place alive. You know what I mean? And it was it was different to see how other people live and how content they are in their own little surroundings and places. And it was it was beautiful. You know what I mean? It's like coming from a place like America and then Auckland and stuff where it's so hustle and bustle and you don't ever see that like decompression of just, ah, oh, people are just happy chilling. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, I need to find that, you know, like, and well, that, some, some people I know, right. They, it's kind of, in some senses, it's Auckland versus the rest of the country. Yeah. Some people are just like, why would anyone want to live in Auckland? Yeah. And then some Aucklanders are like, why would you want to believe this? You know? Yeah. And it's only just recently I've started to find that other side of the coin. Like, God, that might actually be nice. <laughs> you know, like to not have to worry about all this shit and all the hustle and bustle and the high prices of everything. And you know what I mean? And it's like, um, but yeah, then it all just falls back to the same thing. It's like, I don't want to move my kids out of schools. And you know what I mean? That's unfair. I had to do that a lot as a kid growing up, you know, yeah, like yeah. I went to probably 10, 15 different schools throughout my life. Oh, it's horrible, man. Moving and bouncing around, you know what I mean? And it, if I wasn't good at sports and had other things that kind of helped me find friends and gel into little circles and things, it could have been a lot harder, you know what I mean? So I don't want to put my kids through that, the throw them in the deep end. Let's see if you can swim. You know what I yeah, mean? It's yeah. like, that's why moving to Australia has always been a, like pretty much it's been at the top of one of my bucket lists for a long time musically. Cause I knew I wanted to push it there, but at the same time, it's like, I'm not going to move my kid in high school well, to Aussie and... Melbourne and Sydney and Brisbane, they're just Auckland on steroids, really. Mate, yeah. <laughs> that, that's why I love it so much, you know, like, especially Melbourne. Melbourne's probably one of my favorite places on the planet, you know what I mean? Just the graffiti, the art, the... It's a very artsy city. I love it, man. You know what I mean? Like, it reminds me of a LA a lot, like, in, yeah. a, in a weird kind of way, but it does, it just... Yeah, the the art, the graffiti everywhere, top of buildings, people doing big paint roller blockies off the side of thing. It's amazing, you know. Like in my in my eyes, that's that's beautiful, you know. Yeah, and they have a good public transport network as well, which is one of the problems I find with New Zealand. Oh, bro, I've had uh, I've had the mayor on here, and uh, I saw that, bro. Congrats, that's that's a good look. You know? Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to actually try and get Phil Goff on here, yeah, again, man. So. Ask him and about uh, Auckland and. How he's improving public transport because bro once you go overseas man like you you realize how shit public transport is in new zealand oh bro yeah <laughs> you do like um me and my wife we went to um sydney like at the the end of last year and um got off a plane onto a train yeah as part of the train at uh, the airport they have the train station yeah we yeah. jumped off a plane we walked maybe 200 meters down to a platform onto a train that took us straight into the city. Yeah. Like it was amazing. It was like, wow, these dudes got this shit locked down. You know what I mean? And it was like, we had a few different places we wanted to go. And that whole thing was accessible right off the plane. Yeah. You know what I mean? Jump off a plane into a train terminal that would take you where you needed to go. And it was like, wow, this is crazy. And that was Sydney. That was the first time I'd been there. And Melbourne's, you know what I mean? They've got the trams, they've got everything. It just, it's a, it's quite an eye opener, like yeah, you're saying. Yeah. You see, and like, then you come to Auckland, obviously, which a lot of the money that that yeah. the, uh, the government gets, they invest back into Auckland. But yeah. yet, the no train, nah, nah. You know, <laughs> you it, get off that, you get off that uh, plane at Auckland Airport. You're like, and, oh, that's uh, a forty minute taxi. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's real bad, man. Yeah. I mean, they're just they're at the moment they're in the process of sorting out a train from here to Auckland. Yeah, but. but it's the launching next year and it's going to be two and a half hours one way. That's what I heard. I, that's what I heard. And people were like, who the hell's going to sign up for a longer trip? Yeah. You know, like it, it, it yeah. It, it doesn't make, it doesn't make sense. I mean, you need like the bullet train to get you there in 45 people like take my money. Yeah. You know, Yo, I, was, I was reading the other day that China work on the, working on these levitating magnetic trains. Oh yeah. I heard that it'll that. go like 
six hundred kilometers an hour or some shit, and I'm not like, even touching the track. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh right. man, yo, man, we can't even get a train from the airport to the city. <laughs> they are working on these these levitating levitating sci fi trains. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, like I was. Yeah, I listen to a lot of talk back and stuff like just being an old bugger now, like yeah. in my car, you know, like. Like I was saying, I don't listen to a lot of music, you know. I, I was worried you're going to be like, who's who's your artist now and stuff. I'd be like, bro, I don't even listen to a lot of people. But um, Bro, I'm the same, bro. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, That's I'd rather listen to people get older, talk, man. you know. Yeah, like, yeah. And, and on Talkback and stuff, they were talking about the other day, I think it was Japan or something. They had a sinkhole in the middle of their CBD. That shit was fixed in two days. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, if that yeah. happened here, I saw that. Yeah. that would take us two years to, like, function and get this whole thing popping, you know what I mean? Whereas... They're just so quick overseas, you know. It's a lot more money, a lot more people. And oh stuff yeah, like obviously that, that does that does play a part. But even the city rail link that they got in Auckland, man. I mean, every time I go to the CBD, it's just yeah. construction everywhere. Oh, it's bad now too. Yeah, it, it's probably I to, worse. Than, <laughs> I try to stay away from the CBD, man. It's probably but, worse than ever. You know, yo. it, it's only it, it makes me realize that like every time I go into the city for a gig or something, and it's like shit. I actually haven't been in the town for a while. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like my my olds used to live on the shore, so I used to drive past quite a lot. So I'd see a lot of things happening. But now they are like my mom lives by me. I don't see. Auckland City as much as I used to and going to gigs it's really like oh shit this road's closed this is a vital road yeah this road's closed this is a pretty vital road you know and they're they're trying to do some underground train thing or something but at the same time they're just disrupting the whole of Auckland City you know it's yeah like, yeah yeah too little too late bro hard right like when we because we went up north for Easter to, up to the Bay of Islands and yeah. Cape Reinger and all that and obviously Dope. with Auckland you can't drive around it you have to drive through it through it yeah so you have to drive through the cbd over the harbor bridge yeah and i was i was, I was like oh yeah it's changed quite a bit yeah they got their big what is it commercial tower that they're building with and then they got the new market buildings and i'm like oh yo man this place has just changed so much and changed like, a lot like it was crazy when i seen they were closing new market for like two years just yeah. to revamp it it's like holy crap this is quite a a spot like that's where my kid that's where my oldest kid my 13 year old that's where they kick it that's their cool spot you yeah, know they yeah. go and hang out and that's little... a bit of a that's a bit of an artsy area of yeah, yeah 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 they go there and be little mall rats and stuff you know <laughs> it's kind of funny watching that all happen through your own kids you know you're like i want to hate on this but i was kind of doing similar shit you yeah know? Like, <laughs> yeah when you're younger eh? it's pretty funny yeah right? that's why yeah, that's why you probably relate to it are you with being a parent because obviously i'm not a parent so i'm interested yeah. in this are you a bit worried with when when you see some of the things that happen with technology bro there's a lot of yeah a lot of things you know like um it's pretty much just talking to your kids and just trying to stay on a level field with them and you know what i mean and and i think that's kind of a benefit of being a younger parent you know what i mean like i was 21 when i had my first kid so she's 13 i'm 35 you know what i mean we're I understand technology a lot better than someone who was say maybe fifty or yeah. Or 40. Well, my my dad doesn't know. Same anything. with my old lady. You know, yeah. my, my mom like she's on Facebook and stuff like that, but they don't understand the risks involved. And you know what I mean? Like we've had a few scammers almost get through to my mom. She's like, "Oh, I won eighty thousand dollars, right?" I'm like, "Yo, mom!" <laughs> <laughs> like it was deep, you know. I'm like, "What did you tell them?" You know, like too much. That's the problem. But um, yeah, with kids, like uh, yeah, I. It's a hard one because it's like as as much as I'm saying I do know technology, I don't. You know what I mean? Like I came from the MySpace era to the Facebook transition to the Instagram thing where these kids are a few apps ahead now. They're Snapchat-y, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? And, and it's like the kids are just trying to ditch the app that their olds are on. You know what I mean? And that's what I find these days. It's like my daughter ain't on Facebook. Like I ditched Facebook a couple of weeks ago. It was the first time in 10 years, you know what I mean? Like I just deleted it off my phone. I felt like I'd been consumed by that shit for so long. Oh, bro. it's like, easy to just be like, Oh bro. It. Like it got to the point where I'm sitting there at late at night and I'm doing my thing before bed and I'm on there and I'm like, dude, what are you doing? You know what I mean? I'd put my phone down and five minutes later, I'd be back on it looking at the same shit. And it's like, what are you doing, bro? You know? And like, and, uh, it just started to bug me a lot that, um, just, I could let other people's, I think too much information can be a bad thing. You know what I mean? And I, and it's only and it's only just now starting to get to me just kind of as I get older and stuff like that. And your mental health starts to affect different ways. You know what I mean? So when you're looking at everybody's victories all day and everybody's losses all days, you know, my mom was like, oh, yeah, but it's all fun. It's just pictures. And it's like, yeah, mom, I'm, my timeline has 5,000 people on it. You know what I mean? So it's like I'm seeing one suicidal post to one. I won the lottery post to the, you know what I mean? And it's it, it's an emotional roller coaster. You know what I mean? And I felt like. Once I cut that out two weeks ago or something like that, it really opened up my mind to, bro, I've been so much more productive, bro. Like I went home and I was building things and I was going to the hardware store. I was like, it was weird. I had so much more time on my hands and I didn't feel like 
the first couple of days, it was kind of like a withdrawals thing. It's a huge addiction. You know what I mean? Like I was still going to my phone and I was lost. Yeah. I was like, uh, I've just looked at Instagram. That took me about a minute, yeah. you know, to my emails, nothing. <laughs> Messenger, nothing. <laughs> Shit, now what do I do? You know what I mean? And I'd go down to my studio and I'd start to work on something. Or I, and I found like I, it's given me a, a lot more time that I didn't realize I had so much, but like, I've been consumed by social media a lot longer than most, like not most, but our biggest drive when we first started was the MySpace era, you know? So that was about 15 years ago. And it was like, I was heavy into that. That was where we drove. We had a few hundred thousand plays through there in the earlier years. Cause it was like, that was the, the opening up to, Oh wow. I can put this out. So everybody can hear it. You yeah, know what I yeah. mean? <laughs> so I was lost in the MySpace thing for about five years before Facebook for 10. You know what I mean? So I feel like I've lost a better half, half like half well, of my you, life. If you worked out how much time you've spent on social oh, media. Oh, bro. When it started sending you that screen thing and it's like you've spent four hours a day on your screen and it's like, what? You know what I mean? You start yeah. feeling guilty. You're like, oh my God. Four As I'm looking at my screen, you know what I mean? And it was like, that really opened my eyes up, you know? And, and I heard that they stopped doing that because it was an automatic update on your iPhone and it would say, yo, your screen time for today or the week and blah, blah, blah. This averages at four or five hours a day. And it's like, ooh, that's deep, you know? And it really opened my eyes up. And I heard that they stopped doing that because there was a few suicides and stuff. Like it would have made people really feel bad. And uh, you know what I mean? And it was like, it shows you an addiction that you don't have a control over. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I just feel like since I've deleted, like I haven't deleted my Facebook completely because it's all attached to all my music pages and things yeah, like that. Yeah, you yeah. know, like that's that's where they got you by the balls. Yeah, like, that's go well, ahead, that's, bro. That's, delete. What, that's what I find, right? Because yeah. I, I have to do it to kind of promote the podcast yeah. and things. And I'm like, uh, but then I don't. I know by having it, I get lost in, in it, bro. You yeah. know, and, and I feel like, um, yeah. So it's like they're like that. Like, go ahead, bro. Step away. But you're gonna lose your fucking the things you're passionate about. So it's like, okay, I've just deleted it off my phone and stuff. It's my wife, Colin, was good. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, I just feel like it's kind of, I don't know, it, it's a hard one. Like, I well, was the same. Like, I felt like I couldn't delete it for so long because it was my, it was my, um, it was my ins to the music to, for my podcast, for the Broke Artist Show and things like that. It was how I was discovering music. It was how I was staying in the loop, but I was using that to justify my own so when, 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 when you're on social media, do you just scroll through the news feed? Is that what you do? Oh, bro, I would be on there for, you know what I mean? Like everyone at lunchtime, you're at work at lunch on there, just scrolling, you know, just constantly just reading every single thing. Seeing A lot of it's bullshit. It's bullshit, honest. bro. And it's like, it's not uh, even, it's not even news that it expands your mind. And, nothing. It, it's and just some, some stuff that people post are just like, it's what? negativity. <laughs> A lot of it's negative. You know what I mean? And it, it's like. I found myself, you start getting into heated battles with people in comment sections about shit you know nothing about and give a crap about, but you're just so, you're so into it that you find that, you know what I mean? Like my opinion counts. It's yeah. like, bro, shut up and go and do something positive. You know, like, yeah, yeah. that's what I found. You know what I mean? And, and just since I've kind of ditched it, I've gone on a couple of times cause I'll go in there to like download things out of my messenger and stuff. And the very first post I'll see up there as I'm going into my messenger, will be something negative as hell or someone just like shitting on someone. And it's like, yeah. And, and instantly it reminds me of why I'm kind of trying to push away from it a bit, just to free up some of my own thoughts and things like that. Whereas if you're taking in everybody else's victories and losses and stuff daily and constantly, it's like, it's hard to process your own thinking, you know what I mean? And yeah, I, I find I find Facebook is uh is both negative and positive. Yeah. But then with Instagram it tends to be just all positive. Yeah. And uh I know a few people and they're like, Oh, look at all these people, they've they're so successful in the dollar this. I'm like, hey, you don't even know if that's it's fake, man. Yeah, like, like it's 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 bullshit. I try to tell my mom that. Like my mom was saying to me the other day, she's like, Yeah, no, I kind of feel a bit like depressed and anxiety doubt when I look at people's lives and stuff. I'm like, mom, you're only seeing the highlights. Yeah. You know what I mean? How often do you see me post negative shit? Never. I'm only showing people the wins. You don't see the losses. You know what I mean? It's like, because I, I yeah, that's a big downfall too. You know what I mean? You need to show people you're down sometimes. Well, you, it makes you more relatable. It makes you a human. You know yeah. what I mean? And it's like only over the last year, I've opened up about my mental health and just things I was going through and shit like that. You know what I mean? And it was like, for years, I didn't even know I was having any anxiety issues and shit like that because I just felt like that was just who I was and that's just how things are. And it's only as you get older and you start looking at it like, oh, wow, maybe some of these things trigger that shit. You know what I mean? When I'm looking at some guy that I don't even know and I'm like, 
he's going through down times, but it's like, wait, hold on, this is starting to really affect me, and I've got other shit going on. It's like, so that was that was a big one for me. Like Facebook was just an overload of information, you know what I mean? And on only over the last two weeks since, or like, it's not even been two weeks. I'm talking like it's a fucking addiction, deeper. <laughs> you know, it's been years, bro. Nah, it's been maybe like ten days or something like that since I did it, and I really feel. Like, well, I saw your post saying, oh, I'm deleting the Facebook app. I'm just deleting it for a while, you know what I mean? And just um, some some of the like conversations I've had with people off of that and stuff, and they're just like, yo, I feel like it was designed to kind of pollute your mind, you know what I mean? It's kind of designed to make you depressed and envy other people's lives. And Well, the thing is, right, is Google and Facebook, they have all these – all this access to all this data, right? Yeah, bro. So they'll use it to manipulate. It's all about marketing, man. They work out a um, an awesome as marketing strategy. Yeah. They know, okay, this data that we've got that shows you know how to exactly manipulate. Exactly what you. he likes. You know exactly what he buys. You know, yep. You know his his spend limit. You know what he. They know how to target things to you now. Oh yeah, yeah. It's yeah. real, real bad, man. I listen to a lot of that, like on the Joe Budden podcast and stuff like that, like yeah. their whole like data gate thing, and you know, like what's a stream worth, and it's deep, bro. And he he asked some. Questions that are like, you know what I mean? I, I, it opens your mind up to some things, you know, and it, and the same thing, yeah, just the data thing as well. Like, even, and I hear a lot of people saying, even if you switched off all of it now, it's too late. It's too late. They got you, bro. They got your number, bro. You know, like, and I'm not too worried about that. I got nothing to hide. They can market whatever the hell they want at me. You know what I mean? Most of the time, the shit they're marketing at me is stuff I want to see. You yeah. know what I mean? To be honest, like at the moment, every other post is a fucking some kind of vocal effects plugin or, you know what I mean? And it's like, they know that's what I, my passion is right now with my mixing. And so they're marketing things strategically at me in that sense. You know what I mean? I try but, to use an ad blocker where I can. Yeah. Yep. So they, they don't target me with that stuff. Yeah. Then I'm like, oh. Well, it's crazy. It's everywhere. Like it's on your stories. It's on the Instagram feed. It's in your messenger now. It's you can't like, escape it. It's buzzy. Bro. That's it's why I'm like, oh, how do you, how do you teach kids this stuff? Yeah. Cause they won't know anything different. Bro, yeah. This is all they know. Yeah, that, that's why that, I ask you this. That stuff. blows me away, bro. That's like, why I'm like, yo, man. Like, that's why I'm like, oh man, do I want to be a parent? Yeah, it blows, the shit out of it me. It blows me away, bro. Just like the 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 world that they live in now and what they know. It's no just difference. Totally, totally different to you ours, know? man. Like, what do you mean that you couldn't just like throw on the video camera on your phone and spit a verse to the whole world at one time yeah. live? It's like, bro, that only happened in the last couple of years. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, and even even the internet, man, it was still in its infancy. Yeah, I remember the whole dial up. Do, 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 oh do, yeah, do. hell yeah, bro! Like, mom, get off the phone. Yeah, I'm trying to do something, man. Yeah, it's deep, bro. It is deep, hard. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, yeah. So I I just wonder where everything's going and going and stuff in terms of technology. I had a I had a dude on here about uh, about a month ago to talk about cybersecurity and stuff and yeah. how they access your accounts. Oh, and yeah, and that would have been a mind blown. I was like, bro. Oh, I was like, oh, bro. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> that's too much. Uh, yeah, yeah. Too- yeah. Uh, Cause I met him at a, a security, security event conference and he was explaining on this, on this big billboard, how they get your information. Even yeah. if it's, even if you're set it to private on social media, oh, yeah, they, they can still st- get in, bro. They could still, they could still, they could go to your friend's page. And access and, and access that, and they just grab like little bits of information, yeah, and then they piece it all together, and then they can sell that shit on, on to the someone dark else. Web. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. noticed that, bro. Like, I've started getting emails from like beat producers and stuff that I never signed up to your email, bro. Why are you, you know, yeah. to your mailing list, and all of a sudden you got access to my email? It's like I realized that that should be passing on through other people, and you know, it's kind of crazy how that all works. Yeah, bro. man. Have you ever uh, watched uh, Black Mirror? No, I haven't. I want to, but I'm kind of worried about all that. <laughs> <laughs> bro, yeah, bro. You might become uh, super paranoid, man. Yeah. Be like, shit. See, that's the kind of stuff that fuck with my brain, bro. Like, you know what I mean? So I kind of, yeah, I kind of like filter what I'll let in sometimes. You know what I mean? Like some some stuff like that might get my brain ticking too much. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, like, yeah. Overthinking the world, bro. You're like, uh, I started like putting tape over like my. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go, bro. There you go. Yeah, definitely, bro. Yeah, man. They they got the eyes on me, bro. Hard. But, but I think at the end of the day, they don't really care, right? But yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah. Bro, can we take a break real quick? I just got a purse again. Yeah, it's, it's all good. Well, we could, we could, we can, we can wrap it up here anyway. Oh, yeah, my man. Um, and uh, we'll we'll uh do a do a verse. Yeah, bro. Um, but Hard. yo, man, is there any um? Do you wanna just let everyone know where they can holler at you? Yeah, definitely. Um, Obviously not Facebook. <laughs> not not on the not on my personal one at the moment, but I'm still on the uh, Ryan Lovins and the Broke Artist Hip Hop Show page on Facebook. On Instagram, it's Ryan Lovins. Pretty much just type Ryan Lovins, R-Y-A-N-L-O-V-I-N-S into any social media and I should come up. You'll see some videos. I've got 
40 plus music videos, 14 albums. A you, lot of material, man. A lot, a lot of stuff if, if you're you, interested. If you listen to it all, yeah, you'll be spending weeks. Yeah. On that <laughs> weeks. <laughs> no doubt. Yo, just want to give a shout out to uh, Ryan Lovins. He's about to kill this beat. Yo. Hope you're ready for it. Shout out Zero Fox Clothing, what's good? It's Ryan Lovins, PhD, broke artist. Kiwi Talks Podcast, thanks for having me. Let's get it. What up? Yo. Hey, I'm on the edge, looking over, it's a long way down There's tears on the face of people I was making proud I never waste a day, a leap of faith, I'll break the ground You ever thought I was ready, then I'm fucking ready now Cause I never take a day off, yeah, putting in work, man, hoping it pays off Well, you can't always say you want a job, but to me, motherfuckers, man, looking laid off This shit is hard work, yeah, mixed with dedication I leave my heart up on that stage and then it gets ovations I'm always moving forward, now I'll never be complacent With a style so permanent, they can't erase it Talking old days, shake, you'll never fade away This that trip they were talking about when they seen all that purple rain i'm on the edge thinking should i stay or should i go it's been a couple years now man my back's been by the dough but i've been going so hard man you would have never known they said because i'm small and white the hip-hop man just ain't my home whoa i guess them fuckers didn't get me i mean my dad's a patch member and my mom is a hippie my whole fucking life i moved around like a gypsy i put my heart into this hip-hop hope you never forget me the path I chose, yeah, it might not be for everyone That's why I'm going hard and chases till the end and come I'm always on the move, it's almost like I'm on the run Cause every year I say I'm done and then do more than everyone A new page, a new day, a lot has changed Long distance saying bro, clocking up the case Blowing smoke, world spinning like I'm in a daze Y'all been taking up your dues while I've been overpaying What up? Yeah It's Ryan Lovins, broke on his tip hop show What's up? Kiwi Talks Podcast PhD for life. Shout out Zero Fucks. Yeah. Yeah, that's the show, man. Make sure you support the Broke Artist Podcast every Tuesday. And support my man, Ryan Lovins, T13, and Anim PhD. Yeah. We out. Thanks for having me, brother. The man.